First and foremost, the Arabs and Arabia was in between the two major superpowers of the time. And those were the Sassanids and the Byzantine Empire. And subhanAllah, what happened in 30-40 years? Arabia conquered these two superpowers. Had Arabia been in China, it would not have been able to conquer these two superpowers. Additionally, the Arabs did not have a history of colonialism or aggressive behavior. Because the Arabs were busy fighting amongst themselves, they never challenged Rome, they never challenged Persia. So when the Arab armies first marched towards Rome and Persia, i.e. after Islam, the Romans and the Persians were laughing. Who are these Bedouins wanting to attack us? So it was a surprise completely. Another point is that the fact that the Arabs did not have their own unique civilization. If you don't have a unified government, you don't have law and order in society. That's the first benchmark of a civilization. And then another benchmark is literature, arts, architecture. Now the Arabs did not have literature, they had poetry, which is one step less. Because they didn't have reading and writing. The Arabs did not have buildings. They didn't build anything of lasting significance. When Islam came, it made it easier for the Arabs to develop a unique and their own culture and civilization. There was no competition. If Islam had come to the Romans, it would have been very problematic. Because they have their entire structure up and running. You have to then fight the status quo. In Arabia, you can say there's somewhat of a vacuum. So when the Prophet unites the Arabs for the first time, the wars that he's undertaking are relatively small. The fact that they didn't have a civilization is in fact a blessing in disguise. Because then Islam came and brought that civilization. And a unique Islamic civilization with its own language, its own literature, its own script, its own coinage even, its own architectural style as you know. The Umayyads had their own, the Abbasids had their own, the Andalusi, all of this came. It came because there was a vacuum. Another benefit and wisdom of sending the Prophet to Arabia was the fact that because of the internal warfare amongst the Arabs and their relative backward state, the rise of a political entity from Arabia was completely unexpected. It is as if right now somebody pointed to one of the lowest GDP countries and said in five years this will be the superpower of the world. Also another point of benefit is that Mecca was the site of the first house built for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was the place of Ibrahim and Ismail. Therefore, it was most appropriate that Mecca become the place of the first universal religion. Because Islam is the first universal religion. Every other religion that Allah revealed, which is now called Judaism or Christianity, they were local. They weren't meant to be universal. We believe that Jesus Christ did not come for all of the world. He came for the children of Israel. We believe that Moses was not sent for all of mankind. He was sent for only the Jews. Yet the Prophet was sent for the entire world. So it is befitting that his place be the place where the first house of worship was ever built on earth. That the first universal call come from that very valley, from that very sanctuary, from that very house. Yet another benefit is that even though the Arabs did not have certain qualities, they had other qualities. Of those qualities was the purity of spirit. They were simple people. That when truth comes, you accept it more easily. Another benefit that the Arabs had was that they were a people who were so used to hardship, so used to lack of food and lack of water and, and everything. And they're used to traveling in the desert for long distances with small amounts of water, small amounts of food. And early Islamic conquest needed that. It needed that stamina that neither the Romans nor the Persians had. Also the Arabs had characteristics that were very positive, bravery. They were proud. If you're proud of something that is worthy to be proud of, if you're proud of being a Muslim, this is positive. They were also honest people. The Arabs hated lying. And there's many evidences to show this. Of them is the famous story of Abu Sufyan with Heraclius. Abu Sufyan was brought in front of Heraclius. Heraclius knew that Abu Sufyan is an enemy to the Prophet. So Heraclius wanted to make sure that Abu Sufyan is speaking the truth. So he put all of the people of at his back. And he's facing Heraclius. And then he told the people behind Abu Sufyan, If Abu Sufyan lies, make a motion to me that he's lying. Abu Sufyan said, were it not for the fact that my people would have accused me of being a liar, I would have invented lies against the Prophet I didn't want to tell the truth. I didn't want to say all of these things because they're all positive. Is he the most noble? Is he honest? Is he trustworthy? Is he this? In other words, despite being a pagan, he didn't want to be called a liar. Also, the Arabs were sincere in their oaths. 
If they gave a promise, they would uphold it. The Arabs were people of their word. And that's why there were no written contracts in Arabia until Islam came. If a man said it, that's it, he said it. So treachery was considered to be very, very evil amongst them. And the final point that we'll mention is that the Arabs were, of course, the best horsemen. The Romans and the Persians could not compete, neither with the horses of Arabia, nor the riders of Arabia. And they were the most accustomed to the most brutal war. And then, of course, there is the issue of the Arabic language itself. The Arabic language is a Semitic language. The Semitic languages are far more eloquent and powerful than languages based in Latin. The final reason that we will mention why Allah chose the Arabs is of course the most obvious one. And that is the dua of Ibrahim as he's building the Kaaba, him and his son Ismail. And he says, رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ O oh, our Lord, we pray to you that from our progeny, you send forth one messenger, Rasul Minhum, who will come to them and recite to them your signs and will purify them, Yuzakihim, and will teach them the book and wisdom. Allah says in the Quran, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوب We will give you Ishaq and after Ishaq will give you another prophet, Ya'qub. He is being told that there's going to be many prophets from Ishaq. So, Ibrahim makes a dua that, Oh Allah, from this son as well, I want a child. And so, of course, the children of Ismail are the Arabs. And so, the Prophet Ibrahim's dua had to be fulfilled. And that is why the main reason we can say that Allah chose the Arabs is that the Prophet Ibrahim said, I want a prophet from this son. And that was exactly the Prophet ﷺ said, Ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the response of the dua that my father Ibrahim made. وَأَنَا بُشْرَى عِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمْ And I am the glad tidings that Jesus predicted. This is what our Prophet ﷺ said.